Hello, my name is Vitotas Butirmas, and I'm going to present in this MLM the second part of a two-part series on cyber attacks and Ukraine's power grid for 2015 and 2016. In this MLM, I'm going to talk about the attack that took a year later uh, in December of 2016, which uh, did not get much attention perhaps in the media, but it had some very serious implications. What led to and happened on December 17, 2016? Well, you have to understand, again, the uh, political and military context following Russia's annexation of Ukraine's Crimea province in 2014. Military clashes continue in the regions of Ukraine. And on December 17th, remote a cyber intrusion at a 330 uh, kilowatt substation called North feeding the capital city of Kiev resulted in one-fifth of the city's power supply being lost and the power restored after a few hours. What was different this time? First of all, similar things happened. The intrusion took place. There was a reconnaissance period that allowed for a preparation phase of several months to execute this attack. But was different this time was the adversary was much more sophisticated than the previous year, thought to be a state-supported, highly skilled team called Sandworm. Sandworm is associated with the Russian government military's uh, GRU intelligence organization. An attack tool was used, designed to disrupt the grid control systems called Indestroyer or Crash Override, depending upon which uh, software company's report you, you read. The attack was automated rather than the manual one a year before. You didn't have this situation where someone was watching the screen and the mouse was uh, moving by itself. In addition to repeating previous year's opening of the breakers at a substation, an attempt was made to compromise the relays. And this is what was significant. Why was the attempt on the relays significant? Why were they trying to compromise the relays? Well, first we have to think what a relay does. A relay protects bulk power equipment. Relays are like safety systems for the power grid. They automatically trip and isolate equipment from damage. This is why you can recover from a blackout after a few hours. There is no damage. It's just a matter of reconnecting and synchronizing the phases and you're back in business providing power. But without the relays, the manual restoration of power that was done the year before, it becomes a more dangerous option. If something is wrong with the synchronization and the relays aren't there to trip, you can actually have a lot of damaged equipment and it won't take you a few hours to restore power. It could be weeks or months depending upon the level of damage. So that's why this attack was much more sinister, much more advanced. They're seeking the attacker this time to have a more massive, a longer lasting effect of damaged equipment rather than just having to close the breakers and restore power. Now you're trying to destroy something because you're removing the safety elements in the grid control system. What are the key takeaways? Very similar uh, to the previous MLM uh, that was discussed. Well, the political conflicts can spill over and infect industrial operations. Uh, if your country is in conflict with another, for whatever reason you can expect is some sort of a cyber component to appear and you should be uh, wary of your systems and, and be, uh, be vigilant. Attacks on safety systems are increasing and consequences can be severe. Again, going after the relays, a year later, the uh, safety instrumented systems of a Saudi petrochemical plant were also compromised. These are becoming targets now that we have to be aware of and take uh, uh, effective uh, measures to mitigate the risk. Always the cyber intruder seeks to avoid detection. They want to have the time to go in and do reconnaissance and uh, catalog and log your systems and get all the authority they need to actually take over control from you. Internet connected business networks must be separated from control networks. I've heard many times operators saying uh, this uh, cyber stuff doesn't affect me. We are uh, air gapped. Our uh, control networks are not connected to the internet. I say, are you sure? Have you checked? 
And I would say also as well, uh, if you're a CISO or an engineer at a utility, are you sure? Or are, are you going to wait for a, an intrusion to tell you that your assumption was incorrect? Remote access policies should be strictly and actively controlled. Again, the adversary is seeking any way they can to get into your system, one way or the other. If you set up a defensive uh, measure, it's just a challenge for them to find another way. They want this access to your systems. That's a key, okay? It gets by all the encryption, everything else you try to put up. They come in as somebody who's friendly, you're one of us, and okay, we'll give you access. This is what they're seeking to do. Monitoring equipment and control networks for anomalous behavior is required for early detection and response of a breach. Again, you need to have somebody looking specifically for cyber intrusions, things going wrong on your uh, control networks, your equipment is not running as the way it should be. And you can't have a senior engineer looking for it. It has to be, you know, they don't have time. You have to have a specially trained person or, or even a security operations center, an, an industrial one, that's dedicated to do this kind of work. You can also look at the ISA 62443 standard, the part three uh, for system security requirements and security can be very helpful in finding ways to mitigate these kind of risks. For further information, there are related MLMs, the part one of this series on Ukraine, uh, MLM 042A. There are very good reference articles published by ISA, the standard 62443-3 system security requirements and security levels. The security company has written a report about the second Ukraine attack, it's called Crash Override. There's also a book about the uh, sandworm Team, the Advanced Persistent Threat Actor that I uh, mentioned, it was supported by the Russian government. You can read about that. 